Let's crank up a bit. Hey drummers, how's it going? Long time no see. Sorry it's been so long since I've had a lesson up. Uh, I've been working on the website, trying to put some packages together. It's all coming together nicely, but I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to chuck out another little free lesson. Um, the theme or the concept we're going to be looking at for this particular lesson is going to be um, sort of choked hi-hats within a groove. So we're going to be playing a nice little 16th note pattern between the kickstand and the hi-hat, and then we're going to chuck in some nice little bzzzt. So predominantly landing on the left hand because I think that's the trickiest part. So if you like what you saw in the intro and you want to give this one a crack, stick around and I'll break it down. Here we go. All right, so I think the best thing to do is just sort of lay out the groove without any of the choked hi-hats. It's two measures long. It's got these nice little syncopated bass drum parts in there. The snare drums providing the backbeat on beats two and four every time. And we're just playing single strokes with the hands. So if we have a look at maybe like beats one and two, we're going to get this one E and a, two E and a. Okay, so we've got a bass drum on beat one, the up of beat one, and then the up of beat two. Anytime it's landing on beat one, or the and of beat one, or beat two, and the and of beat three, it's going to be with your right hand, that's the bass drum it is, and obviously if it's on the E's of the R's, your bass drum is going to be connecting with your left hand, which is a little bit tricky. So, here we go, nice and slow for the first two beats. One E and a, two E and a. Beats three and four are really easy. Three E and a, four E and a. We're just going to leave that pretty open towards the end, so we can kind of loop this little pattern around. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. All right, so if we now dive into measure two, um, we've got a bass drum landing on the and of beat one. So we've not got like a sort of definitive downbeat on beat one itself. We're just going to sort of push it back a little bit to the and of beat one. Still going to land with the right hand because obviously it's on the and of a particular beat. And then we've also got uh, two more kicks which are going to land with the left hand on the up beat two and then the E of beat three. And the rest of it, snare drums on beat two and four, right, left, right, left, right, left, all the way through. So we've got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll just count our way through measures one and two. So we've got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E. Let's speed her up a little bit. All right, and that's measures one and two without any choked tie hats whatsoever. Now we're going to chuck them in, and uh, my little tips for this is what I tend to do is Obviously, with a choked hi-hat, it's much like the same as a choked crash. It's got a really quick delay, except obviously you're closing it with your foot. And that sort of is going to, you're aiming it for to last like a 16th note. So it's going to be closed by the time you play. If you're sort of doing it on your left hand, it's closed by the time you're hitting it, uh, hitting the next note with your right hand and vice versa. Um, so my little tips are just to sort of, because we don't want to do too much movement with our left foot, I'm just kind of like lifting my toes to sort of jerk them up every time that bass drum comes down. So the feet are doing the opposite every time. Um, and then when I'm actually striking the hi-hat, what I tend to do is just, you know, tighten up the angle a little bit and then hit the actual hi-hat more on the edge with the shoulder of a stick. So that sort of helps sort of get the sound to pop out a tiny bit more. And you'll notice that these notes will suddenly lift out, oh, lift up out of the beat a bit more than if you're just playing like a kick with a hi-hat. But when you open the hi-hat as well, you get that top end so it really cuts through. So let's just have a look at the first measure. Okay, so the hi-hat's not actually sort of like lifting all the way up. It's just a tiny bit, just enough to get a little bit of air in there. And obviously, by striking it on the edge a little bit more, you get a bit more punch to it as well. So that's measure one. Measure two. And like me, you're definitely going to find <coughs> the uh, choked hi-hats with the left hand a little bit more tricky. And that's kind of what this whole um, video is about. It's more sort of along the lines of, if you can sort of, you know, if you can play this groove and you can sort of pick out those little, like, 
um, like the E's and the R's with those little choked hi-hats, then you can essentially take the same concept and sort of match it to whatever song you're playing. So if you've got certain notes or certain rhythms that you want to emphasize a tiny bit more, you just sort of like, you know, find out whereabouts in the bar it lands, and then you can just pop one of those little choked hi-hats and really sort of bring it out in the music. So let's just sort of speed it up a tiny bit. That was wrong. Almost sounds quite funky. Um, so it's a really cool little idea, and of course you can play around with it as much as you want. If you wanted to, you could just loop bar one around loads and loads of times, and then chuck in like the, the, the uh, second measure we're doing is like a little ender for that, like you know maybe every three or four bars or something like that. Um, or you can just use it almost as like a little fill uh, if you're sort of playing in a groove. And then sort of return to it. So it's just a nice little idea, um, which leaves one more thing to do, which is to pop up there and sort of smash out a few different speeds at a different angle. So here we go. Go a little bit faster. And let's crank it up a bit. drummers so there it is i hope you enjoyed the lesson thank you very much for watching if you did like it please give it a like it always helps um, if you're a subscriber hit that little notification icon uh, lets you know every time a drum lesson comes out um, if you're new to the channel please subscribe check out the other 300 odd uh, drum lessons we've got going on there's some easy ones in this and some more difficult ones maybe a couple just sort of you know down the video around here um, the website's nearly done and uh, once that's up and running we'll be back to sort of a drum lesson every week um, it'd be sort of bi-weekly for free ones on YouTube but I will just post like a little clip so you can see what there is going on and then if you want to sort of sign up and be a sponsor then it's like five pounds a month or five dollars a month um, but there'll be more information about that coming soon so if you want to find out more about that just check my Facebook page that's where I do sort of like most of my community work you know, it's, it could be better and then if you want you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter so until next time take care keep drumming and I'll see you very soon with some more fun drumming ideas alright see you later bye Cheers.